public hearing is now being called to order at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, January 26 of 2022. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and Act relative to the protection of the wetlands as most recently amended. Notice of the time and place of this hearing was published in the Standard Times on January 19 of 2022. It was also posted in the town clerk's office. Persons wishing to be called, let me try that again. Persons wishing to be heard will be called in the following order. And just so folks viewing know that the members of the commission that are here, me as the chair, Ryan Resendiz, Everett Filler, and Richard Pimentel, Pat Hannon is our agent, Joanne DeMello is our senior clerk. And Hiding behind the scenes is Eric from the Cushing Daily. <clears throat> okay, so on to our agenda. So the first item is uh, minutes for approval. And that'll be from the previous meeting. <clears throat> and Joanne, do we do we have those? I did not have time to complete the minutes. Okay, so we will table that until the next meeting. So uh, let's make a motion to table minute, minutes approval until the next meeting. Somebody so moved. Motion. Okay, do we have a second? Second. A show of hands. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And many times we will call a person by person vote for, but for something like this, since we're all visible, I did a visual. Call. Uh, meeting mail. Pat Hannon, do we have any meeting mail? So the only thing that came in the mail um, since our last meeting is a notice of um, exempt maintenance by Eversource. Um, their usual, you know, we're, we're going to be doing maintenance in our right away. We're exempt. This is why we're exempt. And mm -hmm. if you want to call us, here's our phone number. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty standard procedure. Nothing yes. out of the ordinary there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, old business. So we had several site visits scheduled for this past Saturday due to a couple of mitigating circumstances. We have moved all those till until Saturday, February 5th. We will go to RepWeld. We will go to CVE North America, which is the solar panel array on 88 Wing Lane. And we'll, we'll go to PJ Keating Company, Agent Hannon, anything to add to that? <clears throat> no, um, I, I really don't want to add anything to it until we're done with Keating. Um, okay. That's going to be a bit of a process, and I'd rather just go slowly right. with that. Right. Um, and I'll just add that um, our, our agenda might have had more on it tonight if we had been able to have a quorum available for site visits. This past Saturday, the 22nd, that was not possible. So we've moved those back two weeks, which is, I think, better for all of us and for having as many eyes as possible on every site. <clears throat> okay, so on to new business. And this is a public hearing in RDA for Kyle Mowat for 6 Labonte Street. And before I read this, I will ask for a motion. Do we need to op open a hearing? Yes, we do. Yes. Do I need a motion to open? We need hearing? to open it. We open a, this meeting. Thank you, Do we have a second? Second. Second. A motion from Everett. Second from Ryan. Any further discussion? No. Show of hands. In favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Aye. Thank you. So we have a request for determination filed by Kyle Moat for a property located at 6 Levante Street. Map 15, lot 456C, the applicant proposes tree cutting for five hazardous trees that are within falling distance to the dwelling within the 100 foot buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland. And I know Mr. Mowat's here, but I'm gonna ask our agent to speak on this, if you would. Okay, so I don't know how many of you have been out to, to this site. Um, I think some of you have. And if, and if you remember how close the deck on the back of the house was to the uh, wetlands replication area, and if I can share my screen, I've got a couple of pictures here for you.
You guys seen it? There it goes. It says you have started screen sharing. Yeah. There we go. There it is. So <clears throat> this is from, I don't know if you can see my cursor from my mouse. Yes. Yep. Um, okay, so this is the wetlands replication area. And the silt fence is a little bit beyond the, the stone wall into the, towards the replication area. So the trees are in the buffer zone. Um, there's a little better picture. The, the silt fence wasn't installed yet. Um, they had a silt sock down here. So these are the trees um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, um, but these are really close to the house. And when we had those wind storms last month, branches were breaking off and falling on the house and hitting the deck. And it kind of gave him the, the inkling that he better do something about it. Um, and I think that the builder would have cut them down, but that was money out of his pocket. And he, and he left that for Kyle to do. <laughs> um, so he intends to um, do this with a crane and, and um, here's the silt fence. Um, the trees are, are, you know, inside, outside the limit of work. Um, they would fall on the house if, if they came down. Um, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in favor of um, having them take the trees down as long as none of the branches and debris go into the, to the replication area beyond the silt fence. And- uh, Pat, it looks like from this photo in the time you took the previous photo, that split rail fence has been added along with the- Yes, I, I had been going out there on a regular basis because I had doubts about the viability of the wetlands replication and that it was being done right. I, I think you guys might remember that. Mm -hmm. And um, the builder um, left some retainage in the event that the wetlands doesn't doesn't take. Um, so I, I did explain to Kyle that he couldn't take the stumps out, that, that the stumps would need to stay and the root system would need to stay. He can cut them mm -hmm. as close to the ground as he wants, but um, we don't need to you know rip up the ground there. Well, I'm encouraged by the fact that that split rail fence is there to demarcate the limit of work. <clears throat> yep. Yep. And those trees are pretty close to that split rail fence. Yes, they are. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mowat, I know you're on the call. I don't know if you wanted to add any comments to this, whether you give pro project proponents a chance to speak. Um, no, it's, I mean, it sounds like Pat covered uh, everything. Um, yeah, just. Thank you for your time for uh, considering this and yeah. The other thing I will ask of you for, for the record, just tell us where you live. Uh, at 6 Labonte Street okay. and Cushion. Great, appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can stop with the screen share, that's. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, Anybody on the commission, questions, comments, concerns for, for Pat or for Mr. Moat? No, not at this point. Nope. I would I would just um, ask that, that Kyle contact the office and let me know when they're gonna do the work and I can stop by and I can check it out when they're done. That's all. Okay, yeah, we'll do. Um, I, don't, I don't need to be there when they do it. I, I'm not gonna hold you up, but I, I do wanna be able to stop by and check it out. Okay. Um, I would like to ask Mr. Henderson or Mr. Morrison if they are tuned in for this particular issue. Um, no, uh, and would you have a question or comment? I, I thought we were going to discuss the question of the O&M uh, budget that, that we received a, a letter back from SW Cole, but apparently we, we're not on the agenda, so we're just in, enjoying a meeting. different meeting. So Bob, if I could, for Mr. Morrison, sure. SW Cole hasn't sent me the information that I needed. That's why he didn't get on the agenda. And I saw an email from Derek at SW Cole that he was just getting back from having some COVID issues and he was way behind. So I don't, I don't have anything to present to the commission. Okay. Uh, I've been asking for information and it's not forthcoming. Uh, I thought that I had forwarded to you the information that he sent to me that was relevant to this, but I'll I'll send it to you again and see if it was the correct amount of information or you need additional information. It's not a problem. I'm, I'm looking for his initial comments. 
and what and your responses and then his responses to your comments. I wanted to make sure that SW Cole didn't miss anything. So I'm looking for the for the communications from start to finish. Um, there may be some questions that we have as the Conservation Commission that um, you know Derek didn't contemplate. And then I've asked about the stormwater permit and I, I haven't gotten any information um, back on the stormwater permit. Understood. All right. So thank you both. Um, so on this topic then of an RDA for Mr. Mowat, um, I'll entertain a motion for a negative determination with the conditions that before the cutting starts that Mr. Hannon be given notification and that no trees, branches, no parts of these trees are left in the buffer zone that everything is taken off site. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? No. Okay. Hearing none, I'll, uh, I'm gonna do a voice vote on this. So Everett, how do you vote? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Rick? Yes. And that's a yes for me, so that's unanimous. So thank you, everyone. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Moet. Okay. Next on the agenda where um, that was our, oh, I need a motion to close that hearing, please. <clears throat> motion to close. Thank you, Ryan. Do we have a second? Second. And a uh, show of hands, all in favor for closing Aye. that. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, next item is discussion. So, Mr. Hannon, over to you. So, um, we need to do the site visit um, at Keating before we can proceed anymore with, with that discussion. Um, and I talked to town council today about after we have the site visit, having our, our next meeting. Um, on the agenda be a workshop posted as a workshop so that we could discuss our findings at the site visit. I could make my recommendation to you on, on what I feel we should do um, without any interruptions and, and people you know coming into the into the meeting because at a workshop it's not a public hearing and and we don't have to let people um, comment. And um, town council was gonna look into that and he suggested that perhaps we, we tell them that it's a workshop um, and that we, we make our presentation and have our discussion without any, any interruption. And then you could um, you know, ask if anybody um, wants to, to make any comments. But it wouldn't be a public hearing, uh, Bob. This would be a, a, a workshop to decide whether or not we issue the enforcement order and whether it's an enforcement order to restore, uh, um, which is what we should have should have done in the beginning rather than a notice of intent. Because with the notice of intent, we really did give them three years um, to do the work un unknowingly. Um, but with an order to restore the buffer zone, we could give them a date certain to do that. And, and they would have a, a chance at a public hearing. Thank you, Kyle. Um, Thank you. They would have a chance at a, at a public hearing where you would have to ratify the enforcement order um, to, to speak to you and, and try and convince you um, that you know the commission's wrong and not to uh, ratify the enforcement order. Council thought it would be better to let them talk than to tell them that it's you know it's not a public hearing and um, you know we don't want to hear from you. But last time we had this meeting with them, there were 24 people on Zoom. And it was very hard to manage with people just breaking in. Um, you know, Mr. Vigneault would say, you know, Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment? He wouldn't wait for you to say yes. And he would just go on with his comment. Um, so I've put together um, a PowerPoint presentation of uh, the progressive photos of what have happened with the, with the silt pile. And I also captured um, eight sec segments of video from the hearings from, from the beginning of the, the violation um, all the way to the end so that the commission can hear all of the different things that, that the representatives of Keating have, have told the commission. 
Um, and I have, I have photos to back up the representations that have been made of what it looks like in the field. And I, and I think you're going to be um, disappointed um, at, you know, just what it really turns out to be. DEP has called, um, they, they may enter the fray on um, PJ Keating. When the notice of intent was filled out by um, Doug Vigno, he didn't check off that the stormwater regulations applied. And had that been checked off, it would have been disclosed that there were impacts to the wetlands. So because that wasn't checked off and no, no wetlands impacts were disclosed to DEP, they think this is just there's some dirt in the buffer zone and nothing else has happened. Um, they don't, they don't, well, they didn't realize that there was, you know, 20,000 plus square feet of uh, wetlands that have been altered by um, an excursion of the silt. And that's another thing that we could clear up um, by going from an order and um, doing it that way. But I don't want to go too far into that because that's not on our agenda to decide that. Um, but I would like to have it be informational rather than um, just issue an enforcement order and go through all of that and, and not have it be ratified. Because what I think is serious may not be as serious as you folks, um, you know, when you look at it. And for me, my mission is just to get the dirt out of the buffer zone. Right. So you're saying then that doing this as a workshop as an in informational a workshop for the commission. Pardon me? For the commission. Because we can't deliberate in the field, when we go to that right. site visit, we, we can't deliberate, we can't talk amongst ourselves and say what we feel and what we what we like. Because of, well, and, because and of we, the Yeah, and this gives us an opportunity to to vet it among ourselves and, and come to consensus before we um, issue an enforcement order and start having appeals and and a whole bunch of meetings um, that, that just delay everything. So, so, so during this workshop, we can discuss anything without any issues. Is that, is that what that correct. is? Related, related to that site visit, yes. And is that in lieu of the, the meeting or is that no. before or after the meeting? And before the meeting, rather. That's, that's before the meeting. That way we're all well informed. There's a lot to talk about. And this is something that we did in Oxbridge. We, if we, we had, we have 11 solar fields and we had a lot of problems and we would do a workshop because we couldn't, couldn't talk in the field. Um, and we can't, you know, violate the open meeting law and call each other on the phone or send emails and, and deliberate by email. Um, so having a workshop makes it the best way for us to um, meet the open meeting law requirements mm -hmm. and, um, not have to um, make it a public hearing and not have to take um, testimony. Yes. With public hearing, you have to, right. Yes. Um, so what, what's your recommendation for the timing of this? You say before the next yeah. meeting, do you mean the same day or different day? Yes, I'm, I'm saying that we would um, possibly have a workshop from six to 6.30 and start our meeting at 6.30. You know, open start opening public hearings at, at 6 30. It could all be in the same meeting. It's just you would need to announce that this is a this is a workshop and, and um there's there's some public participation if you want to allow it, you know, if you feel it's necessary. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the chair's prerogative. Right. Yeah. Would uh, would town council be involved in a workshop also? Would he be there? He's gonna be there, yes. And I also spoke to Nick from Cable about, um, about them being able to mute the participants in these larger meetings and to use the raise hand feature. Mm -hmm. And that people could raise their hand and they could be called on and they could be unmuted. And then they would put the hand down and be muted again and, and keep it very orderly. Because this is why Joanne is having trouble doing the minutes. People were talking over each other and um, it's just very hard to do. And, and Zoom works if one person talks at a time. Because what I'm seeing right now on the screen here, the option for hand raising is not visible. Yeah. So that would have to be added. For yeah. Time. And we talked about that because I, I have um, Zoom Pro 
and and the hand raising is on mine. So Nick was going to look into it. Well, the, uh, the reactions button at the bottom should give you a raised hand. Yeah, he said there's some yeah. different versions. Oh, uh, okay. And and I know that on um, see I have raised hand. Yeah, I see you here raised hand. Yeah, I just raised Maybe my it's hand. I'm looking at it through a, through a Chromebook and not through a different you know through. Um, Firefox. Yeah. It, it may matter whether or not you're on the same version of Zoom yeah, when right. you updated Zoom. Yeah, sure. Um, I did update because I had, I thought I had problems with my computer. And um, after I deleted half my stuff, it turned out my mouse was broken. There was nothing wrong with my computer when the online computer guy came to my office. <laughs> mm. So. Well, yeah, I like, I like the idea of having a workshop as opposed to a public hearing, because we can control whatever commentary comes in, it also makes it possible to get this done in 30 minutes. Yeah. So we yeah. Can start our agenda at 6.30. Yeah. So. I mean, people would be able to attend it and watch it and hear it. Um, sure. We, just, we would just be doing all of that and, and trying, um, well, definitely not letting anyone interrupt it. And then it would be up to you if you wanted to, to take comment, but it would be an agenda item for, for discussion later on mm -hmm. under, yeah. the, under the violations. It's gonna be on the agenda. So, yes. um, and that's where we're at. And then, you know, right. depending on snow, if, we, if we've got a foot of snow on the ground next Saturday, um, there's, there's no sense in going to rep weld um, I don't think. Um, Keating, I think it, it would probably still be worth going. Um, I don't know if we want to. I guess we'll play that by the by air, Bob. Yeah. We're always happy when the other man's wrong, and I'm I'm hoping he's going to be wrong. So. It's supposed to get up to the mid forties, fifties, the end of next week. I saw Thursday's fifty. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll take it. And the, and the sun is really warm. It is, it is melting. So we'll keep the same time schedule for the site visits. Yeah, well, it looks like the next, our next site visit would be Saturday, February 5th. Yeah. And we'll do the same times. Yeah. Same amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm curious of the uh, commission members' thoughts on this proposal. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Go ahead, Everett. I think it's a good idea that we have a workshop on this first. Yeah. yeah. You know, because a public hearing, you have to allow commentary, public meeting, it's up to the chair's discretion. Workshop is the same thing. So. And we and if Eric or Nick can keep people on mute, we use the raise hand function. We'll be efficient, and then we can take more commentary during the actual hearing part of or this discussion part of the concom agenda. So that, that works for me. So, um, so yeah, so let's let's plan on doing that for the next meeting. And. So, uh, Pat, other discussion items, for example, your uh, special conditions document that you sent along? Yeah, so, um, and I hate to keep saying in Uxbridge, but in Uxbridge, um, we had additional special conditions um, other than those on the notice of intent. And in fact, we had a set of standard special conditions, and then we had a set of, of special conditions. Um, I, I looked around at everyone's websites. Fairhaven had a really in-depth, deep dive there, as you can see. Um, but when we're in a meeting and, and discussing things and you're hearing from a proponent and we're suddenly finding out that he's going to do the wetlands work himself or um, there's other issues, it would be nice to have a set of, of special conditions that we can fall back on um, at a meeting and because it's just very hard to, for it to jump into your head what you want to add for a condition. And 
And once we got used to the common ones, we could pare this down a little bit um, to our, our standard special conditions of no fueling in the buffer zone, um, no stockpiling in the buffer zone, wetland scientists on site when they're working in the, in the resource area, um, thing, things along that line. Um, and we are seeing more and more people trying to do the work themselves. You know, the fellow that did the wetlands replication of Bonte Street never did one in his life and didn't even have the wetlands replication plan. He had never seen it. He, he admitted that. So um, it would be nice to be able to just say special condition number 10, special condition number 12, and, and get those into the order of conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. I, I had a chance to read a couple of different sittings yesterday, and I sent my comments to you which really weren't, weren't many, I think. So thank you for doing that bit of work and I think, and I think, I think, I think this is, this is, this, this is good to have in our arsenal. Um, and it adds to consistency and it's, it becomes, you know, people can't say, well, you're playing favorites because now we're you know, correct. Here's our list. Here's what it is. Take a look and no, you know, it, it cuts down on surprises as well. So people can't say, oh, we weren't expecting this because we've never seen this before. Yeah, I just ask that you excuse the punctuation. <laughs> well, there wasn't because I'm not an English literature problem. major. <laughs> there weren't any no. problems with, with that either. So um, I think it took me 50 years to find the comma button. So. Uh, <laughs> And Everett, Ryan, or Rick, any comments or questions? I, I like it. It was great. And but there was there was three of them that I didn't. Um, I don't know. I just had questions on like it. All right. So one of them storage stockpiling um, all excavated soils to be stored outside of the hundred foot buffer zone. Some of the projects are within the whole projects within the buffer zone. How do you? Do you are you looking to have the material shipped off site? No, I'm looking for a stockpiling plan. I, I want a plan of where you're going to put it and how you're going to protect it. If they're going to stockpile the buffer zone, then you'd want a silt sock or, or a fence around. It. All right, right, That's right, why. exactly. Uh, Those are the things that when you're in a meeting and it's getting late, you, you don't even think about it. And then a couple of days later, you're looking at the order conditions and saying, oh, I really wish that we had a stockpiling plan. Uh, right. And, and like Bob just said, once we get used to it, um, and we don't have to use all of these. Like there's some in there about barges. Um, you know, Bob had a question on barges. I left it in there because there's a lot of work going on in the Kushnet River, um, just in case. Um, yeah, right. You know, who knows? But over time. And then, and then the concrete washout shall not occur on site. Can't be put on the ground. It's against the law now. It needs, to, it needs not, to be recycled. Right, but you can you can put like, a, they have silt bags that you can yes. wash out into. Right. Right, so you'd want to plan for that. We'd want to if that was it. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I don't, then that's it. Then, it's just then a the tightening equipment. up of all these little right. ambiguities that contractors take advantage of. Right, I just, I just wasn't looking, I was just wondering if you were looking for like, like all right, all equipment stored outside of the buffer zone, I mean, like I said, some of the job sites, the whole the whole job is in the buffer zone. Like yeah. you, you can't have them trucks, you know, so, like get a, a flatbed there and the, right. the okay. equipment moved every night, you know. But on the plan, but if you're gonna put a silt sock around the piece of equipment every night, yeah. you know, or a specified area, then yeah, then I I, I have no problem. I think it's great. It should apply to all the jobs. Yes. Yeah. Hey, hey, Pat, when did you send that out? I don't, I don't remember getting that. Your email bounced, Rick. Uh, I'll have Joanne send it to you tomorrow. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I think it came through on Monday. Monday, okay. Yeah. I have a habit of working on the weekends. While I watch football, I, I do this stuff with the laptop in my lap because I'm not, I'm not that avid of a fan unless there's something really going on. Yeah. I could care less. So, yeah. Um, I, I do a lot of work on the weekend and send the email out on Monday. All right. So. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, any other discussion items, Pat? Um, yes. 
there's a, um, we got a grant. Um, uh, the town got a grant. Um, I don't know whether it was the Board of Health or, or the select one, but I applied for it for some air monitors. And um, I didn't know um, that there was a national um, program going on in, a, in conjunction with EPA that they're, they're putting out these air monitors. Um, basically, if you, if you use it for a year, you get to keep them. Um, and I, I looked into it and I was showing Joanne, there's an interactive map that EPA has in the cloud and you can, you can sign on. And if you have an air monitor, you can actually see your air monitor working um, real time. And you can see the levels of dust that it picks up. And these are only picking up respirable dust. Mm -hmm. And um, when I looked into it, um, it turns out they only cost $216. And they're, they're, um, they're the latest technology. And I'm wondering for larger projects, um, if we wouldn't consider um, requiring um, a respirable dust air monitor uh, at the job sites. And I'm, I'm thinking, we, you wouldn't believe how many dust complaints the Board of Health gets uh, in season. And, and not just on South Main Street, but um, you know, in other parts of town. And I was on the interactive map, Rhode Island's full of them. Um, down Route 6, down towards Born in there, there's, there's a few of them, um, but there's thousands and thousands of them all over the country. It was pretty interesting. And um, respirable dust is a, is a big deal. Um, and our solar fields, um, you know, they wipe out 35 acres at a time. And um, I'll, I'll give you some information mm -hmm. on the next meeting. It's a $200 thing. Um, and and I, I just think it's a really, really good idea. So and it we'll seems see. like your recommendation is that we would use these on big projects like a solar field. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Major major land disturbance because they don't clear it out one acre at a time and build their project. They clear out the whole 35 or 45 or 50 acres. And and there's no way to keep that wet when the wind's blowing and it becomes a problem. And and part of so what was discussed at Keating's violations over time was that there's airborne deposition um, on, into the wetlands vegetation from that silt pile. And I, I've asked to put one of the air monitors that we currently have on rental um, on the silt pile to find out just how much you know, windborne deposition is going into the wetlands and into the neighborhoods off of the silt pile. And I, I don't have an answer on that yet, but I need to explain it to them better. So just something for the radar screen. Is it common or potentially likely that the results of these monitors leads to further action against project proponents? Is it like a 5% thing, 10% thing? Well, um, if, if there's a nuisance condition, then yes, the town, the town would take action. So I'm not sure of what the numerical value is that it's unsafe to breathe. Um, I, I did see some this morning, I was on the map and um, there's a little button that indicates each monitor and it changes color with the in intensity of what it's detecting. And there was one that was red and I clicked on it and it said, if you live there and were there for 24 hours, it would be unhealthful for you. Um, hmm. And, and we get a lot of complaints and we go out and take a lot of pictures. And then the people that are causing the dust say, not our dust. We went by, we saw that car, there was no dust on it, you know, not us. And that's why we've rented some, some not only dust monitors, but volatile organic compounds, weather station, um, humidity, the, the whole nine yards to establish what the background levels of dust are right now in town you know, over the winter. And then what's the, what's the background levels of dust in town when all these projects are up and running and the solar fields are being built and the, you know, Pico stones in operation over on Middle Road, things like that. Okay. And so, you, so, so the town has a grant to get at least one of these? No, we got, no, we got eight. We got eight of them. Oh, okay. Yep. And, and the selectmen voted to 
continue to rent the three with the um, extra technology in them. Um, All right. And um, had I known they only cost two hundred dollars, I, I think we would already have some out, um, you know, mm -hmm. six months ago. But I'm, I'm going to install one at, at the Parting Ways building, and, and you folks will get to check it out. Okay. And because projects are usually a finite amount of time, if we have eight, as the situation allows, one gets moved from a project where the disturbance is done to something else. So these things could be used, or I should say, reused over the course of time. And, and you know, as we're talking about it, maybe the commission buys two of them and we, and we have them in a cabinet and we have a problem in a wetlands or somebody's doing a project, we deploy it. They're only, you know, they're only $216 each. So you said we got eight total, but this grant is just to rent these eight or? Well, no, as long as, as long as we deploy the eight monitors in town right. for one year, mm -hmm. we get to keep them. If we, if we want to take them down in less than a year, we have to return them. I see. And this is in How conjunction much? with EPA and DEP, Mass DEP. Okay. How much is the service like to have to have like no, the real time? It's all on EPA. All you got to do is connect to Wi-Fi and you're in business. Oh. Nice. And if it breaks, if it breaks during the first year, they're going to maintain it. Um, I've been looking into it, and they seem to last three to five years. So, cool. All right. It's better than the he said, she said. <laughs> Much. Yep. Um, other discussion items? If not, we'll move on to stormwater. Okay. Guess we'll go to stormwater. Okay. Um, check came in from CVE. Uh, Beals and Thomas did the on site. Um, Groundwater checks, depth of groundwater. Um, everything seems to have checked out on that. So that's that's a step in the right direction. And um, there'll be some more work now that the um, second part of the review of their um, responses to the um, deficiencies. And then the, there'll be a field visit for the wetlands flagging and um, whether or not the basins are sized right and working. But Beals and Thomas is, is happy that the panels are not in a, in a wetland. Um, That's good. At least not all of them. Right. So and it's good that we got the check or Beals and Thomas got, got the check to keep, keep on going yes. with their review. Yep. Excellent. And, and people aren't happy about it, but it's just, it's, it, it's a requirement. And if their plans went in better, we wouldn't be paid, you know, taking two and three bites at, um, you know, having them fix their plans. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you for that. And other stormwater then? That's it. Okay. Um, so any other agent updates from you, Pat? Nothing, not, nothing new. Uh, I have my budget meeting with the finance committee uh, at seven o'clock on February 9th. Um, I don't know if you want to go, Bob, if you want to be involved in that. Uh, um, we are asking for an additional $18,000 in the budget next year for stormwater um, consultants to finish up our, our compliance. Good. And... Um, our budget is it has been reduced because we took the agent from full time to, to part time. Right. So we're not we're not asking for any extra money for salaries, and we're actually not asking for any extra money for stormwater because the last three years the stormwater didn't get spent and it was turned back and put into right. the general budget. I remember you said that at so, the previous meeting. Yeah. yeah. So we're 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 kind of level funded. Okay. Um, Anybody else with business, anybody on the commission with business for the commission? Okay. Um, 
Anybody else with the business? Mr. Morrison, anything else for us? No, I, I understand, I believe, what we're supposed to be doing, and we'll do it. If we have any questions, we'll call Pat. Yes. Great, thank you. And you folks, you have my cell phone. I, I answer my cell phone all the time. I, I got a call at 10.30 last night and talked to them until 11.30, so. Um. So, Pat, you just said that your budget meeting is February 9th at 7. I know, we have a conservation meeting. Yeah, so I guess you're anticipating a short meeting. Hmm, we'll see. All right, so um, <laughs> this is our next meeting. Oh, I am. Or 6 p.m. <laughs> February. And seeing no further business for tonight's meeting, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Rick. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Everett. Show of hands to adjourn. Voting yes. Thank you all. All right. All right. Have yourselves a nice evening. We'll see you at the next site visit. Yep. All right.